I'm working for Glasgow University, but embedded in this Gallery Glens Landscape Partnership. And my role in the partnership is to explore and try to understand the place names of the area. I've collected about 2,000 place names, and then we can begin to analyze patterns as they emerge of languages and different kinds of land use, um, culture, perception of color. There's an amazing number of names which reflect people's perception of colors in the landscape, for example. So gradually, once we've got this database, populated with the data which have now collected mostly and some of the historic research questions are answered about the background of these names we can begin to do some kind of analysis. As place name uh, researchers we've done some work with other landscape partnerships in the past the research we've done had fed into people's experience of the local landscape via walks and talks and various things like that. So we knew the place names and landscape partnerships worked as a combination. What was really attractive about this is we'd never done work in an area where the place names hadn't been worked on at all, uh, where we're actually doing the research at the same time as interacting with the local community and trying to bring place names into the into the local community. So it was a chance to do it in a different way than we'd, we'd done before. So we, we had the experience from, from past partnerships, but um, it, was, it was a chance to start from scratch, to be built in from, from the very beginning of the process. One of the next things I'm going to be doing, and going to do that, it's nice to do it in the spring really, <laughs> is to walk some of the places. You know, if I have a Ochriach place name, for example, Och is, is Achen, a field word, and Riach is speckled or variegated and things. So what I want to do is, when I've got some of these descriptive terms, to see how it fits into the a modern description of the landscape. In what sense is that field up there or down here, whatever? Um, it, is it speckled in terms of different kinds of vegetation or is it a mixture of heather and rock or what, you know? So um, to actually relate the physical landscape to the place names and the colors as well is quite an interesting thing. I also want to get some pronunciations. There's a place up in Karsfern Parish which looks like it's called Muirdroch Wood, but the local pronunciation is Murdrochet to a Gaelic speaker immediately tells you what that place name means. It's nothing to do with woods or muirs. It's the, the markland, the mark of the bridge, Drochet, and it's right beside that bridge over the Ken, where Murdrochet is on the north side of the bridge, but it's Brigmark on the south side of the bridge, which is another, another markland defined by its proximity to the bridge. So you've got a Gaelic Brigland and a, and a Scots Brigland adjacent, well, facing across the river from each other. Now, it's only by collecting a pronunciation that you can tell that it's not Muirdroch wood, it's Murdrochet. And so the sound world is really important. You have to talk to people, listen to people whose families have been here for ages. Everybody I've spoken, I've spent a lot of time chapping on people's doors and asking them what they can tell me about pronunciations or field names or whatever, and not just here in Fife and Butte and all kinds of places. And my experience is that as soon as you ta start talking about local place names to local people, they get very excited and sometimes quite moved actually. Um, so um, there's, I think it's just an important part, almost a kind of local patriotism, that people who love their landscape and love the community they live in and love the place, uh, and it, they, they also love its history they, and they want to understand the words they speak. Place names are words and it's nice for people to be able, the people feel touched I think by the voices of the past when they understand the names which the past has given to them. They've inherited from their antecedents, whether they're sometimes even ancestors. Um, so there's something intrinsically good, I think, for, for local people just and rewarding and, and sometimes even exciting about people's reception of that, of that knowledge about their place names. For example, from here, the landscape we can see from here, we have down in the valley, the bottom of the, the valley in the glen, we have the river Ken. And um, Ken is a, it's a word which first appears actually as can, and possibly, there's some doubt about what it means, there is a word can't which means um, a boundary or border or edge, and it could be that it's a territorial uh, boundary between the two, two parish, it's now a parish boundary, but it could have been a, ter a wider territorial boundary between two lordships or something like that. Um, but there's also a word can in early insular Celtic languages, which means bright and shining. And what's very interesting is we have a, a Duach river coming from the north in Carsfern Parish, and then the water of Ken coming from the northeast, and they meet together. And Duach contains the, the Gallic word for black. So we have a black water, the Duach, and the water of Ken or Can, which might be the bright shining water. I mean, that's a very common pattern in 
Celtic toponymy, you have the black and the white rivers um, in association with each other. So that's another possible explanation. To the north there, another parish boundary between this parish and the next one is the Garpal Burn. Garpal is Gar of Paul, which means the Gar of is rough, and Paul, as I said earlier, is the Gallic word here for a, a lively stream. So that's to the north. And then we have down here, we have Knock Lay, which is uh, Gallic Croc is, is a hill, usually not huge. And Lay is of, of, a, of calves. Um, it's the calf hill. And it poss possibly a, a, a hill in the Gallic speaking period where car cars who were too young to put on the open pasture or perhaps slightly more exposed areas might be kept on a, a calf hill until they were big enough to cope with some serious weather. So we've got mixtures of colors, we've got land use and, and, and farming names, just within a, within a glimpse of, of from, this, from this point. Thank you.